hello and welcome to EVs Beyond. I'm Rich Edwards and today I am at a Kia dealership in West Auckland to look at this vehicle behind me, the Kia EV5. Now, this one's kind of snuck up on us. It's been a car that's been talked about for a while. It's the first Kia EV built in China for international markets, but it's landed here for a bit of a promotional tour. And we have in my hand here now, the pricing and specification of this vehicle. And I tell you what, this thing is pretty darn unbeatable based on its specification and the value. Anyway, let's have a bit of a look around. Right, so starting at the front of the Kia EV5, got these kind of crazy headlights here that kind of flow around in a bit of a zigzag there. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, Kia badging there. Now there is a frunk under the front. I'll put a photo of it up now. So not massive, but always great to have some front storage. Uh, now we have the wheels. Of course, we start off at 18s on the entry level and go up from there. They're a very Kia design. So they've got plastic covers on parts of it and metal on the other. Pretty funky look, very reminiscent of the EV9. So this really is a, a little brother of the EV9. I think more so than what we've seen with perhaps the, perhaps the EV6, it very much does follow its design language. Now, if we come around here, we have normal wing mirrors, thankfully. We have these pop-out lever uh, door handles, privacy glass on the upper models, and this kind of funky cladding around the place. I don't know how this black is going to hold up. It does look perhaps it's going to scratch a little bit, but hopefully Kia's materials engineers have kind of thought of that a little bit. If we come around to the back, light's very reminiscent again, and I'll close the boot here for a second, of the EV9, this big LED crossbar across the back, uh, reversing camera there, bit of a spoiler, and yeah, quite a small rear window, so it'll be interesting to see what that does for visibility about the back of the car. Now we will reopen this boot again, and this is a substantial boot. I will put the liters up at the bottom of the screen, but that looks sizable and you can, it looks like you can expand it with perhaps two stage movements for the rear seat or a curse that will, I believe that all folds completely flat. And you've got some additional storage under here where you can go to a two level boot. That is such a cool system and super handy, particularly if you've got more fragile items or for sales reps, you've got to get all their various things in there as well. That one just comes out and you've got some charging equipment in there. Now, I don't know what the situation is with the spare tire, but I'm going to take a wild guess that it's a repair kit. And you've got these cool little actual movable tie downs up in the top here. Again, great for hanging bags and the like. Uh, that is a good size boot. That's a family car size boot, I think. Now, if we come around this other side for a second, the charging port is here in front of the wheel. It's electrified, CCS type two, 11 kilowatt AC, up to 140 kilowatt DC for the entry level, closes electrically as well. Things like this electrified uh, charge flat. Um, it is, oh, uh, I'm just still flabbergasted at the value this car represents. Right, let's go and have a look around inside the Kia EV5. Right, so we are inside the Kia EV5. Now, this car is a prototype in New Zealand for testing and it I've been told very clearly it's not necessarily representative of what we are going to get, but it probably is reasonably. <laughs> and wow, what a car. It is quite busy, I think. You've got these two big 12.3 inch screens, but unlike a lot of the screens we see, they are, they are quite seamless. They do almost pretty much join together, though I do see a little bit of edge there. You've got a separate panel there for your climate, your usual Kia infotainment system, uh, and your climate control down here. Uh, great to have separate buttons for a lot of the stuff. We've got USB-C ports down there, uh, and the car has V2L on the higher models, both inside and out. So there's a V2L plug, I think, up to 16 amp in the boot, and then you get the adapter to use on the charge port for VT, V2L outside. Big wireless charger down here. Uh, and some of these cars have a fingerprint sensor, but I'm not sure where it is in this car. But anyway, you've got your transmission shifter here, like a Kia EV9, lots of buttons on the steering wheel for the ADAS, uh, and a bit of an interesting setup with a C here, in that if I raise this armrest, that's a bench seat. Very 1970s Holden and Ford. Um, I'm not sure that you can actually sit someone there at this stage, it's just like a bit of a pocket there, but 
maybe the mind boggles could we have a six seat kia ev5 <laughs> at some point i doubt it but wouldn't that be nice uh, and i guess those are the things you can do with an all ev platform this is on an all ev platform it's not a shared petrol platform like things like the nero so potentially who knows what this uh, platform could do but yeah other than that the seats are sizable comfortable this one's electric here uh, this is I think equivalent to an earth because and here's my deduction i don't think this heat this seat is ventilated but it is heated we've got heating buttons on the door and this is an all-wheel drive so yeah this is an earth closest to an earth all-wheel drive um yeah ah oh, there's the fingerprint sensor i found it i haven't worked out what that entirely does at this point but uh yeah i understand in some countries it can do things like micro payments that kind of stuff in new zealand i believe it's for unlocking the car once they activate that and you've got it all working. Right, let's check out the back seat. Okay, so in the back seat, now I've got the seat set well back, probably more than I need it back. Uh, I'm large and six foot, and I have got plenty of room back here, super comfortable, lots of space underneath the seat in front. Now I've got a USB-C port here, nice pocket and a, go a coat hook here that I've actually found with my daughter, you can actually usually rest iPads up there. Probably a, a bit of a parenting tip here. Now. This is available on the top model in New Zealand. It's a little uh, heater and cooler for your drinks and food. So that's set to, I think, cold at the moment. You can have it to hot. Great place to keep a couple of cans, or maybe you want to heat up a pie. No guarantees of food safety there. Uh, you have an armrest in the middle. This is a really comfortable seat. It's nice and soft. Uh, yeah, does. Yeah, I, I have no complaints back here. I think it'd be quite comfortable for quite the ride. Uh, one thing I'll notice is the sight lines from this back seat are really good. You've got plenty of space over the top of the headrest in front, which is always good for helping with uh, sickness. And there are rear air vents. Again, this is a feature you don't often see in a car in this price range is having these extra air vents out along the side of the back of the car. Let's go have a little bit of a closer look at the specification. Now, I've only just got this full spec sheet in my hand, so I am going to have a bit of a read through it, but it is worthwhile. The range starts at $67,990 plus on-road costs for the light long range. They only at this stage do long range models. And when they say long range, they really mean it. 540 kilometers of WLTP with an 88.1 kilowatt hour LFP battery. Now that's from FinDreams, which is a subsidiary of BYD. So uh, yeah. Great battery technology there. We all love that LFP technology, but 88 kilowatts in a car that's really a small to medium size SUV at $68,000 basically is impressive. There is nothing else in the market that can match that value. Uh, yeah, you, if you look generally around that $67,000, $68,000 mark, you're talking at most looking at say the KGM Torres, now a 71, 72 kilowatt hour battery, but most of the cars in that segment are 64 kilowatts if you're lucky. So that is huge. And the spec isn't bad. The, it's front wheel drive in the entry level model. We've got motor power of 160 kilowatts and 310 newton meters. DC charging rate of up to 141 kilowatts. 8 inch alloys, LED headlamps with daytime running lights. You've got smart cruise control, a smart key, cloth interior trim. You've got some fairly reasonable uh, ADAS and driver assistance functions in there. Uh, two 12.3 inch screens, uh, rear view camera and parking sensors, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, you get a digital connect mobile phone connection system uh, with over the year updates. It's a, I think a first for Kia in New Zealand. They've been slowly bringing in these uh, I, sorts of technology, six speaker sound system, dual zone cli climate control, uh, and a uh, electronic uh, interior mirror. So that's really good specification for the $68,000 version, $67,990, uh, the light two wheel drive. Now you can go up to the light plus, uh, it's uh, $70,450. You get a uh, blind spot view monitor, uh, 360 degree parking camera, some additional parking collision functions, uh, more parking sensors, electric fold mirrors, uh, and you get uh, some leather in certain spots, uh, as well as your cloth, and you get driver's seat electric adjustment. So perhaps worth the extra few thousand dollars there. Uh, you can go up to the uh, Earth long range at 75,450, uh, and the Earth all wheel drive, so a dual motor there, for 8450. Now, when you get up to the uh, the Earth 
long range, you get 90 cent shallow wheels, privacy class, uh, auto flush door handles. I don't really want those. I like normal door handles, as everyone knows. Uh, power, power child safety door locks, safe exit assist, uh, power tailgate, uh, artificial leather seats. Uh, nice to see that they're saying artificial leather rather than vegan leather there. Um, heated front seats, uh, a full color heads up display, wireless charging, a V2L function. So you uh, only get that once you get up to the higher level of vehicle. A heat pump, so the other ones below that have uh, more traditional air conditioning or a PDC heater. Uh, and then with the all-wheel drive one, the power goes up to 230 kilowatts and 480 uh, newton meters of torque. Uh, but your range drops to 500 kilometers WLTP. So the, that's actually probably a fairly good sweet spot in the range, particularly if you're going for the all-wheel drive. That is, that all-wheel drive is really competitive versus, let's say, a long-range all-wheel drive uh, Model Y uh, in that segment. Uh, so, so far, I think my two highlights of the range have to be that all-wheel drive earth or that light, that entry-level model. That is really good. And then you have the top of the range GT Line long range. So uh, 500 kilometers WLTP again, $85,000 for $85,450. Uh, so you go up to 20 inch yellow wheels, you get a GT line exterior treatment, so some flashy bits, a panoramic sunroof, uh, you get some animated turn signals, uh, power front uh, passenger seat, uh, memory functions and ventilation for the front seats on the driver's side, massages in the seats, I do love a good massage, an eight speaker Harman Kardon audio system, fingerprint recognition uh, for sat nav and the vehicle start, uh, ambient mood lighting, alloy pedals, uh, front and rear auto up and down windows, and a uh, cooling console box to keep your drinks nice and cold. So that is a really broad range there but some really good value cars in there but i still struggle to understand how people are going to get past the just the massive value particularly fleets in that light long range this has to be the best value electric vehicle to launch in 2024 and yes it can tow 1250 kilograms there will be a tow kit coming for the car so that's it for a quick look around the kia ev5 what a really cool vehicle. I think it's really well sized for New Zealand. I think it looks fantastic. And again, I say it too much, those prices, particularly the entry level point with a battery that big, absolutely crazy. So uh, yeah, we'll have a review of this coming up sometime, hopefully in the next couple of months, I say looking at Kia, Kia's PR team over there. Uh, <laughs> who's looking away from me? But um, yeah, uh, a really exciting car and we'll have more from it as this year goes on at evsandbeyond.co.nz.